you make of uh, Maggie Hassan's response about her 2002 position? She said that she didn't support an income tax, but she just said take the pledge, and of course now she does. Uh, personally, I, you know, I, I think I think the pledge across the board is nothing but a political gimmick. I, I have been in many forums with all of the candidates, and I hear them do the same thing. Yes, I'll promise to save the, you know, the agricultural department, because we know how important it is to all of you farmers. Yes, I will get rid of the waiting list, and I'll uh, provide more education and more transportation to all of the folks who have disabilities. Yes, I will support all of those children's programs. I've seen this over and over and over again on the, you know, on the, um, the campaign trail. And yet, if you look at the other side of the aisle, they've gone even further with the kinds of pledges they've taken. They pledged uh, to cut spending, cut taxes, cut government, and, oh, by the way, turn us into a right-to-work state. So these are nothing more than way They're political gimmicks. They're ways of, you know, of pandering, as far as I'm concerned. And that's, you know, that's just my own take. Uh, going back to your uh, zombie ad, do you consider you Gallen, Jean Shaheen, and John Lynch zombies? I listen. That was a light take on something that I think is an outdated, antiquated um, eligibility test for anybody who runs for statewide offices. I have such confidence in in the um, intelligence of our voters, um, their ability to understand when they've been, um, you know, when when somebody's using something for political gain. Um, they know what their property tax taxes are. I, I've said, you know, I don't know when everybody else's property taxes come. For us, for my family, they come just before Christmas. Just before Christmas. And every year you look at that property tax bill and you say, okay, what does that mean now for what we can do for our children and our grandchildren? Um, I, I think it's very similar to most people around the state. Twice a year those property taxes come. Everybody knows if we do nothing else that's a promise to continue to raise their property taxes. And, the, and, and we cannot grow or innovate our way out of this. I've looked at all of the numbers, and in a best case scenario, given what we've been handed, what the next governor and the next legislature face, um, best case scenario says we need to either grow between roughly 3 to 5 percent. In the worst case scenario, we need to grow somewhere between around 8 to 11 percent. We know that it's somewhere in between. We're not going to see the best case scenario. Some of those lawsuits, I mean, they have, they've inspired over half a million dollars, half a billion dollars in lawsuits, um, this particular legislature. Um, they have uh, put into place 170 to $270 million worth of tax breaks that don't kick in until next year. They've cut this budget 11%. They have rained down on our communities over $200 million worth of cost shifting, and they are fully prepared to shift more. You've heard Bill O'Brien say he wants to send, you know, he wants to cut another $400 million. You can cut anything you want. It doesn't mean the need goes away. So, you know, our, our folks know what's happening to them. They just also, they and, and I hear everywhere from Democrats, Independents, and Republicans, they want to see tax reform. What they don't want is an additional burden, and I don't want it either. I have four kids here, eight grandchildren, I want them to be able to enjoy our quality of life, and I don't want to see them burdened any further than they are. We can go if you're done. <laughs> oh, I, I asked uh, Mrs. Silly uh, whether she considered uh, Hugh Gallen, Jean Shaheen, and John Lynch zombies, and she said it was lighthearted ad and the pledge is just a gimmick. Uh, in my lifetime, no Democrats won without taking the pledge, although Jean, on her third go-round. And the last Democrat, was it less than, we got less than, who took, who wouldn't take the pledge, you got less than 40 percent. So is the pledge just a gimmick? I think it's really important for voters to have clarity from candidates who they are considering. And so just as voters care about a whole lot of other issues that we are very clear about, um, they care about where New Hampshire candidates are on the income or sales tax because, uh, as I do, most of them think it would be bad for our economy and bad for our middle class families. So just as I tell them where I am on any number of issues, I think it's really important to tell voters where we are on an income or sales tax 
because they care about it and they want to know and they deserve to know. You think Jackie's being clear? I, no. And it's not a gimmick, the pledge. I, I think it's, I, I'm running to make, I'm running for governor to make progress, not to make a point. And I think it is really important, again, to communicate with voters. And, um, you know, people can, can use all the semantics they want, but at the end of the day, families are trying to figure out how they're going to afford their tax bills. They're struggling with property taxes. There's work we need to do to, um, to decrease the property tax burden. But overall, they are worrying about how they're going to make ends meet and move forward and make progress. And so they deserve candidates who will tell them what they're going to do. The next governor, the day after he or she is elected, is going to need to start planning the budget because you have to present it by February 15th. That's what's required by New Hampshire law. So we don't have a lot of time to have a conversation and then decide what we're going to do. The next governor needs to have a plan for how we're going to build a budget. And I have a plan to defeat the Tea Party and then to move forward with an innovation jobs plan and then a plan about how we're going to begin to reverse the damage that the Tea Party has done to our state. And that's what I'm really focused on. I think it's an obligation now as a candidate then to state how you feel specifically on that issue and is she engaging in sort of a gimmick by saying uh, let's just have a conversation not coming right out and saying how she feels. Again, I'm really focused on my communications with okay. the voters.